Let's bring in Robert Kelly now, Professor of Political Science at South Korea's Pusan National University. Uh, Robert, thanks for being with us uh, on BBC right. World. If the North Koreans are sending the message they don't want war, does that necessarily mean they want talks? No, it doesn't. Um, the North Koreans have had opportunities for a long time, a good 25 years now, um, in the course of the nuclear program to talk, and, and we've tried this with them in the past. And very often things are two steps forward, one step back, and three to the right, and then we get tangled up in details and, and things don't really pan out. Uh, my sense is right now that the North Koreans probably want to finish the program that they have. They're on the cusp of a fully functional nuclear ICBM and then sort of survive the international opprobrium of that, which will take a couple of years, and then they'll come back to bargain in a more serious way. I'd be very surprised if they accept Secretary Tillerson's offer. And if they come back later to bargain with the weapons that they want, right. how much does that change the balance of power? Well, it gives them an obvious um, new chit to use in the, in the bargaining game, right? I mean, we want to, we the West, um, the United States, South Korea and Japan, pardon me, would like to get in and at least see what they have. We'd like to make sure that the, the facilities are safe. Um, I think there's sort of growing concern that there might be something like a Chernobyl style incident in North Korea. Um, and the North Koreans are going to bargain hard over this kind of stuff, right? And once the weapons are working and once they're they're more proven than they are now, they'll continue to push even harder with that. They'll, they'll ask for a great deal of money or they'll ask for major concessions about American forces in South Korea or something like that. I mean, the negotiations will only get harder, which is probably one of the reasons why Secretary Tillerson would like to start it now. I mean, the longer we wait, the better the North Korean position becomes because we can't really stop their program. And so when they do eventually come to the table with this thing fully functional and dozens or maybe even hundreds of missiles, they'll ask for quite a lot. So do you feel that Rex Tillerson at least is prepared to lose face a bit on this, even if the White House isn't? I do. I do. My sense is that Secretary Tillerson realizes better than the White House and um, the staff around the president that um, North Korea, one, won't denuclearize, and two, isn't going to be bluffed or bludgeoned or, or sort of blustered into giving these things up. In fact, I think the president has kind of realized this, too. You may have noticed after the most recent ICBM test that the president said very little, just, you know, we'll take care of it or something like that. There was very little of the bluster in the past, and I think this is just reality setting in, which is the North Koreans have these things. They've gotten around our best efforts to stop it in the last couple of decades. You know, they kind of beat us on this one, and we have to start figuring out what to do next. We have to kind of adapt to it, because, I mean, striking North Korea would be hugely dangerous, and in lieu of that, we're stuck with them as a, North, uh, as a nuclear power, and we have to start figuring out how to respond to that. Robert Kelly, thank you very much.